Hello and welcome to Yerushalmi Pea, Daf Lamed Gimel, in the Ozada print. I'm going to talk about uh, something going back to the Mishnah that the Gemara says. Um, the Mishnah says earlier on, Lamed Aleph uh, Mabes, if a person wrote his properties to his son in his will, and he assigned to his wife land of any size whatsoever, and as we'll see in the Gemara here, she accepted it, okay? So if the Ksuba says she forfeited her right to collect the Ksuba from those properties. Now, I don't want to go into the exact halakas, but the Bavli on, uh, in Bava Basra talks about Yerusha and stuff on Kuf, Lamed, Gimel, and Aleph. So it says explicitly this is only when he gave away all of his property, because otherwise if he left over some of his property, then his wife could just say that I assume that he was going to pay his Ksuba from here. So I have no problem if, she, if he's giving it away to his sons or to my stepsons or to my biological sons that we share as well. Um, and the fact that the land that was worth, uh, that was left, uh, I don't know how much it was worth. So I thought it was, I thought it out the whole thing. And I didn't want to fight. So that's halacha. But I don't, and again, I don't want to go into the halacha lamaisa either. But I just want to say the Gemara says two uh, things here. Rav Omer, he says, B'mezaka al yada. That this mission is only talking about where the husband transferred the estate to his sons through his wife. He used his wife as the agent to do it. And Shmuel says, it's mechalik lefaneh. He did it in front of her. So again, in both cases, it wasn't just that he did it. Um... It was that she was aware of it, either by actively being involved, which again shows so some, some consent, or in front of her. Um, and so the kasha is, well, wait a minute, like what? He should have just pro, like maybe she didn't want to protest. She was just she was embarrassed. So this is so that we have uh, throughout many many places that the bottom line is that a woman is not embarrassed to protest in front of her husband. If she thinks he's doing something wrong, she'll say it. You find that Sarah corrects Avraham, and Hashem actually says that Sarah is right. And you find this throughout many, many chazals. This is one of the makaras for it, that a woman is not embarrassed to correct her husband. Um, and this is a very, very important yesod. We find, I've talked about this earlier, where one of the um, stories that he was, the wife was was punished because she should have protested. We find this by Naomi. Naomi was, how, how, why is Naomi held responsible for Elimelech's uh actions because she's his wife and she's responsible to protest um, and we find this in many other places but I just want to say that there's a Ramchal I forgot where it's located exactly but the Ramchal it might be in Kinesh Shem he says he says this very similar thing that he says that wait a minute um, aren't we going to have how are we not embarrassed of Hashem Hashem is like our Baal he's like our husband so to speak and we are like his his wife we're Meshavit we're mishav- ourselves to Hashem and um, so every person should be totally embarrassed to ask Hashem for anything and how do we stand in front of Hashem but he says that there's a special mita that Hashem created that a wife is not embarrassed to be tovas, and she and she thinks, what do you mean? I I made you, so to speak, and therefore you you owe me. And so so too Hashem made it in the teva that we feel towards Him kaviyachol that I could demand things from you. It's a very fascinating psychological dynamic. But that's that's what we see here clearly that this woman, if she disagreed, she would actually say something, and therefore when she consents, so therefore there's an element that she loses her ksuba. I want to say that in the Rav Chaim Kanievsky Sefer. A book by Arts Girl, I read a story which was very, very powerful to me, um, which was that um, Rav Chaim one time was crying, and his son asked him, what's the matter, Tati? Are you okay? And he said, I don't know Yerushalmi, and I'm afraid of my of my final test, that they're going to test me on Yerushalmi, I don't know it. So um, his son said to him, you know, Tati, you wrote you wrote Svarim on all of Yerushalmi, you teach Yerushalmi to thousands of people, tens of thousands of people, like, you know it. So he said, no, I don't. Come learn with me. And they made a chavrusa shav, and they chazer Yerushalmi together. Rav Asher Rubin sings that song. My Rebbe told me he one time was in the base medrash visiting Shmuel Arbach, his, his Rebbe. Um, and Shmuel Arbach was weeping and crying. And everybody said, what's the matter? Was there a basur ra? Did somebody pass away? That's what it sounded like. So he asked around, and he found out that Rav Shmuel had had a halachic discussion with a Talmud Chacham, and he forgot Yerushalmi for a moment. And he was much mourning the fact that he had forgotten this Yerushalmi, which was very, very fundamental for halacha. And again, when you have a mind, and you're a posek, and you're, and you're a, one of the Gedoli Hadar, and you have this appreciation for Torah, it's something that's amazing. So halvai, we should be able to to uh, to learn and to understand what we're learning. Have a great day.